right, Little Rod, grab your coffee, get jacked up. It's time for another episode of The Block Talk. I'm Jamie Taylor here with Susan Irwin Prouse and Cliff Prouse. You two are some fantastic artists that are local to Arkansas yes. and have been up to some really big things in our community. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah. We are excited to be here and we love everything that you do. So it's an honor to be here. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And we met in networking circles when you guys were yes. first starting your festival, which yes. is called mm-hmm. Yadaloo. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I remember the first time you stood up in a room and said, hey, I'm Susan, Susan Irwin Prowse and I am here to represent Yadaloo. It's this new festival. And everybody gonna... said, what is Yadaloo? What is that? <laughs> yeah. Name? And they were like, and what I was in my head going like, that's a cool name. Like, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. And what is the festival about? And what is she about? She's so beautiful. And like, oh, you know, and you, you weren't there. And so I was just like, what is this sparkly, exciting? <laughs> like, you know, and then we got to meet you too. And so I just want to hear the whole story about yeah. how you guys got started, how you met and where you are and all that. So. All right. Yeah. Well, so uh, Cliff and I met four years ago on the stage at Willie D's at a yep. local real River Market hot, hot spot, and uh, he plays guitar and fiddle, and I sing and play piano, and I've I got my start in the music industry 16 years ago there on that stage, so uh, Willie Dees is home for us, and um, we met, He they would hire him to come in and play the changeovers, if you're familiar with the dueling piano format, oh, yeah. so he would rock out <laughs> on guitar and fiddle, and um, anyway, so we met there, and for obvious reasons, got together for music at first, and um, then we fell in love, and I started, we worked together um, at that time. I was doing a show, and I still do. We do this show together now at Oakland Casino at, right during race season. And at the time, I was working with a drummer, and it was just me with the piano and a drummer. And I added him to the show, and then it just kind of evolved and skyrocketed from there. So now we tour together internationally. So it's awesome for me to have found a partner in life to do what I do but still be from Arkansas. So we travel the world, but we still have the roots of Arkansas, which is so near and dear to our heart. And families are here in Hot Springs and in North Little Rock. He grew up in North Little Rock. Yeah, and, I yeah. did. I've been here pretty much my whole life. So that's that's where the, the genesis of our relationship was. And then, you know, Arkansas has been the common denominator for all of that, too. Is So it's been good. Yeah. So, Cliff, what were you just, like, totally blindsided when you came to Willie D's and this beautiful girl? Is... Yeah, so it's actually funny. Um, one, the entertainment director there, uh, Matt, he told us to get in touch with each other yeah. before. And it was kind of this back and forth, like... Um, we didn't I think know she met. messaged me, and I didn't know who she was. And he did respond. And so I, I well, Playing I did respond. Get, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I did respond like he a week and a half prowls later. Yet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I responded like a week and a half later. And then I was like, whatever. And then she never responded, and so we never <laughs> got in touch with each other. Cliff. Right. And so we had the rehearsal and met the the night of the rehearsal at Willie D's, and Before finally connected and. Hit it off. So he um, had me at the solo of Purple Rain with the guitar, um, and then he pulled out the fiddle. And then I have to say, he had me at fiddle because yeah. <laughs> if you've heard him play fiddle, he's just world class. It's amazing. A well, great, great guitar player, but all of it. I mean, his talent is amazing. So we'd love anybody to come check out our show. You know, there yeah. at Oakland and find our Cliff and Susan brand going on with all that new music releasing. Our first single is going to release in um, April. Yeah, April third. It's called Fiddle and Keys. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's yeah. so cute. And, and fiddle is tough to play. I mean, it's like both of them are, first of all, all of it's hard to play. I, play, I did band for, you know, in school, yeah, yeah. play clarinet, you know, 12 or 13 years, but it was never like a artistic situation. <laughs> like right. artistic yeah. people are different. They handle it different. They can yeah. write music. And I'm always so enthralled to figure out how you come up with the words to a song or how you write the music or what inspires you to do that. And so it, musicians are super creative people. Yeah, so I think I'm everybody really excited to hear this. takes such a different approach to writing too. And, you know, some people write the music first. Some people write the lyrics first. Some people have no idea what a melody should sound like, but they're really good at writing lyrics. And mm-hmm. so they meet someone else that's like, oh, this is how it should go. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so everybody's approach is so different. There's not one right way you know? to do it, I'd right. say. Yeah, no. Did you guys find with each other that you had, you know, maybe he had some of the things that you were always looking for and vice versa musically, not Absolutely. just love Definitely. <laughs> Mainly organization of her chords when she um, is trying to set up a show. She's so disorganized and she really <laughs> needed me. 
to be there for her. <laughs> he means, of course, like the, my cables, if you looked in the bag. <laughs> That's, I think she meant more about the songs, but yeah. I took it like chords, though, in my yeah, head. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. wait, no. but she's pretty good at piano, no. Cliff. <laughs> he's, he's very organized on the stage. I'm very organized in business. I'm more of the A-type personality, so I'm the more big personality, although he's really come out of his shell on stage. And then his musicianship and his ability to make me a better musician and his talent for just uh, hearing, and he plays by ear. He ta He's primarily self-taught in everything. I took 10 years of classical piano lessons, so I had that fundamental basis where I read the music and then I taught myself later in my 20s to go, okay, I think, oh, yeah, and I figured it out. So now I play by ear, but yeah. his natural ability. So it's a really good yin and yang, like a good fit together. Yeah, she's got that musical theory background, and I'll, I'll play a chord, and I'm like, I what have no this? idea and what chord I'm what playing is. right now, but it sounds <laughs> like, good. And it's this. Yeah. <laughs> That's so exciting. So when you guys get together, at first you're just, I mean, obviously you're dating and you're doing the Willie D's things, which is so much fun. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you've both sung to me on my birthday. Yeah, but <laughs> at some point. Yes. If we I'm remember, <laughs> I'm always the request person. Yeah, so I'm yeah. always up there with the request. So you guys have done all that. You're having fun. What takes it to the next level musically when you figure out like, hey, we've got something here. Let's join forces and tour together. I mean, does the relationship happen first or does the music just take you away? I mean, how does that happen? I think it, it kind of happened in parallel, really. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, it just kind of flowed right along. I mean, we, we both kind of had the same goals with where we wanted to go with our music mm -hmm. and our show and it kind of evolved uh, naturally from there. I will say what we did, what I think is smart, that we waited uh, for a few years, a couple years, to play together and find our skin on stage together, find our sound, yeah. what really works, and then what we can reproduce in the studio to fit the brand. You know, so my marketing of like, first of all, what do we sound like? Who's gonna lead this song? Who's the lead vocal? Who, the harmonies had to really start meshing it. We didn't want to force that. I, mean, I never even sang really before. No, he can't, yeah. and so now he's, yeah. he's fantastic. And so that's uh, not only that, but from my fan base, because I'd been in the music industry doing my solo career. For a while. So when we, we added that, so that was, people had to get used to that. And then we had to get used to each other. And so the sound and everything needed to be, I think, artistically organic and really uh, real and true to resonate. That's, that's something I believe in from any type of art. And so that's now come full circle and we're really proud of what we're doing, what we're writing together and mm -hmm. how we're going to produce that and what it sounds like in the studio so it doesn't sound too far off of what you come and see us do because we are a duo. We will have a full band eventually, you know, that we tour with but uh, the duo works as a business it's a great model because we're one household yeah <laughs> one two plane tickets one hotel room you yeah. know so we can do that and still you know fly around to these places all over the world that are primarily solo piano bars but we're a duo in them yeah. which is another it's a it's a, it's the it's different than Willie D's because there's two pianos at Willie D's but it's similar in that it's sing-along and it's that crowd interactive yeah. all request show and it's so fun but what's really cool too is like the guitar and the fiddle they add so much to the piano and I'm sure both vocals that yes it's just you can do so much between mm -hmm. both yeah. of those because yeah. as opposed to like I think it just like chords well, on, so on, you mean for the yeah. keys, so the way, and yes, it is chords, it's singing, but a piano has left, right, hand, meets bass and treble, and it's rhythmic, and then you can still do lead. So the, what the, is really awesome about a piano or a piano player is that you can replicate a full song pretty well, and you can hear all of the parts as long as you're playing them well enough to, uh, you know, take any song and do that on the piano. So that's, that's kind of why piano bars work, but then when you add guitar, you get that guitar sound, and he has worked t on his tones and everything to really really like replicate all of the songs we cover fiddle is just an added little icing on the cake um, but with what we do I, I stack my left hand so my left hand's playing a bass guitar sound so I've got the bass guitar sound so basically a bass guitar and then I've got drum machine that's the drummer and then I've got my right hand playing the rhythm and sometimes lead on piano so essentially we have a guitar I'm sorry but guitar fiddle two vocals piano bass guitar player and a drummer you are a one family and, band yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so and there's a time and place to do that show um, right. You know, when we want to do our originals and get out and start, you know, opening up for other bands and doing bigger shows, we'll pull in the full band for the actual full band experience. But yep. for what we do on the road, it's great. I like the, you know, we need another ticket to fly my drummer out. I've got mm -hmm. a drummer in a box, which, you know, as long as it's used tastefully and what we do, it really works well. And people can check that out. We've got, we love to share how we do what we do with other uh, duos and just solo acts and whatnot to sound, have a bigger sound and but be one or two people so that's really exciting mm. and then so after you guys build this relationship and now you're out and you're doing this music um together then you come up with this brilliant idea which is to start a festival 
local to us. And I know there are festivals around Arkansas, which mm-hmm. you completely shattered them all this past September. Oh. <laughs> um, the, the actually coveted award for the best festival. Well, it's the best new festival. Yes. So I want to pay. Yeah, let's just <laughs> go with the best festival. Yeah. Well, I do have to give a major shout out. Toad Suck this year got best festival and yeah. they've been for many years, but we got best new festival of the year, which is a super honor. And after going to the Arkansas Festival and event, Events and uh, Festival and Events Association, right. AFEA, the conference in Eureka Springs this uh, past January, and meeting all of the people who are doing awesome things around this state with festivals and events. It's just, uh, it, it was amazing. Like, so to have that kind of honor out of that, it was uh, just wonderful. And, well, and it was an organic effort. I mean, I would mm-hmm. see you guys all the time at yeah. chambers, at networking groups, mm-hmm. at events, at, I mean, just everywhere. Mm-hmm. You were everywhere. The yeah. flyers I mean, that's were the key everywhere. To it. Yeah, it was amazing to watch the effort oh, and then you. see the product turn out. And so tell me about how this happens. How does Yodaloo become Yodaloo? Well, um, so we, we've we had the idea, um, you know, in, in our industry doing events, uh, we've, we've been a part of many events and obviously we have the experience musically uh, in that background but we uh, we really just wanted to bring something new to the community and do something really cool for North Little Rock and we love the Argena Arts District it's it's always been just such a cool place and um, so one of our dear friends and our production guy uh, who works with us on Yadaloo, Stan. We've known Stan him Jackson. at Stan Jackson. Mm-hmm. He he uh, runs SJX Productions. So he had the idea to bring something to North Little Rock side. And so we started looking at this piece of land and um, you can kind of get into how Yadaloo actually yeah, came so about. Yeah, so I think honestly, like it's just that I feel, I feel like the timing was right for Central Arkansas to have a new fresh brand and something cool and um, we really focused on country and Americana so we're saying staying genre specific subgenre of country being that Texas red dirt tri- more traditional sound not so much mainstream country which we, we really think and it's been very successful in the markets in around these states uh, in the southern states especially um, so we chose that genre. We went that direction on the North Little Rock side because the aesthetic of the actual beautiful piece of land right over the river, you look at the Little Rock landscape across. Yeah. Um, the North Little Rock side has been so awesome to work with because they're growing and they're like the Argenta district has got such cool things happening. Um, and But we're, we're pushing it on both sides, yeah. you know, because we're members of both chambers and I'm working with the downtown Little Rock partnership now. And um, so, I mean, we're, we want to grow to both sides um i would say the reach is on both sides yeah um but just honestly like to grow our business because we make most of our money on the road right now and so when as a married couple if we ever want to have a family if we ever want to we need to start growing our business back home and so um being an achiever and a go-getter i'm like okay what is that thing that we can do how can i plant roots and still Mm -hmm. do what i love so so our production company big red dog productions we've had that for almost three years now and so we're producing other artists developing other artists showing them how to do what we do for a living as an independent artist so we are giving back and sharing and growing other artists like brie ogden is one that's doing awesome right now Mm -hmm. Um, and then under that umbrella of production, producing, he's an amazing producer, producing music, producing songs, albums for artists. We said that, and then the Stan Jackson relationship happened, and then it's like, okay, this feels right. Let's explore that opportunity. It just kind of organically grew into something I'm like, okay, that, what, what, if we were to, what would we do? And then we're like, well, country music, we are country music. So, and then that happened, and then... Uh, just talking with people like you. I mean, I sat down with you and I'd say, how, if I'm doing this, how, give me some advice on how to market this. And so honestly, the key ingredient is that we had an idea, but we reached out to people in the community and connected, built the relationships because this kind of endeavor is all about community. Not it is all thing. about leveraging the community and building something that we can all be proud of and that maybe we hand over eventually one day. That's just like a thing, you know, that's really yeah. great. And that's something that I heard at the conference in Eureka and it really resonated with me. It's like, this is, it's, it's really is about community and about getting the teams together and the volunteers and working with the city and working with the military and working with, you know, you know, bringing arts up, uplifting local artists and giving them a platform while you're bringing in national acts. So all of that is kind of like, it just happened and it felt right. And I think it was just, we're like the conduit to make this happen and, and it's just taken off. So yeah. it's well, a, a daily thing. I mean, we work so hard every day. It's, it's, but it's fun. It's fun work. 
It's a little scary at times. <laughs> Friends of ours said, you know, entre- the work everyone dreams of. Though. Yeah, they say jump at entrepreneurship. Somebody said this the other day. Entrepreneurship is like jumping out of the airplane and building a parachute on the way down. Yeah. That was what happened <laughs> last year. It was like, okay, yeah. how do you do this? So. But it came together, you know, from the outside looking in. It came together from hearing you talk about it and seeing little pieces of things come together on social media and then the flyers and then he, watching it kind of your confidence grow in the product as it went yes. and then day of just completely blows everybody's mind. It's bigger than you think it's going to be. Mm. It's more exciting. It's mm. more fun. You know, you're, you're thinking you're going to have a good time, but then you have a great time, right. you know? And I think what is really great is you're saying that it's building heritage in the community. And that's mm. really what it is. Yes. It's giving you, mm-hmm. do you remember when we went to Yadalu back when we were, you know, yeah. so many years ago yes. and it just creates that opportunity year over year for the community to gather together and have a good yep. time and celebrate the arts. Yes. So I think that's wonderful. And it's funny when you mention um, working with the both sides of the river too, is Argenta actually's name is always been Argenta yes. before they changed the city to North Little Rock. So yes. when they say Argenta Arts District, mm-hmm. I'm always like, well, didn't you start out as yes. Argenta? So I, I learned that on the trolley. Yeah. I didn't know I did too. If you That's go a to great Wikipedia, ride. Everybody should take it. Yeah. Everybody should. That's both sides. If you want to get on the streetcar, it's free and you learn all the history yes. yeah. on both it's sides. Really cool. Yeah. So what that about- is another thing I do want. To, we want to really um, lift the, the history of North Little Rock and just Little Rock in general. And we're looking at doing an activation zone this year that's going to allow not just our area to tell their story, but maybe reach out to other CVBs and oh, excuse me and other um, parts of the state to be a part of it to tell the history of Arkansas. So we're working on something that yeah. may or may not. We'll find out if we can pull it off this year. But the vision is to basically really talk about the history of the, did you know that the trail of tears came through right there on that that Louisiana, path right there yeah, yeah. yeah. Louisiana purchase mm-hmm. is, is not far I mean there's a lot of different things that happened mm-hmm. in Arkansas that people yeah. don't really have a lot of information about and then you start learning it and you're like this is incredible yeah. and so I think it's great that you're highlighting that about mm-hmm. our state and giving us the opportunity yeah. as residents to learn more about our community in such a cool environment mm-hmm. but I have to ask because I yes. can't I can't I want to figure it out yeah how did Yadalu become the name we were sitting around our friend Matthew Press. He's the one who introduced us. Um, he is. I like the this inter- guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, we were all sitting around saying, "Okay, what? What is? Sounds country. I'm from a marketing brain. I'm like, I don't want anything anybody's ever had because I don't want to have right. to deal with trademarks or. Um, it's so just, hard coming up with a name. You right? know, and and I said, you know, it needs to sound fun and it needs to sound country. And so we were saying, y'all, Yadalu. Um, no, y- yodel. I'm sorry, mean. yodeling and y'all, yodelu. Just it eventually popped out. Yeah, some, yeah, you know. yeah. So some just like form of these uh, words. Yeah. Came so out. we were yeah, sitting saying, around. I think st- Bonnaroo. Like she, we kept talking about Bonnaroo and yodeling and y'all, and eventually. And like, and then out. and there's Lollapalooza. There's Coachella. There's all these weird sounding. But they're names. fun, and it's you don't it forget fun. them. And and I did not have a tra- I did not have a problem trademarking it because it's like yeah. so no. Rare. But I looked right. on every social media platform, and there was no Yadalu. No, so I was like, and the brand is so cute. Like oh, I mean, you. well, sorry, cool, but it's like it is. It's so cool. I love the lettering, and I love thank the way you. it looks. So yeah, I, that's my favorite color. So I mean, I've been works. a fan from day one. <laughs> yeah. So I, as soon as I we had the, I was like, okay, and I went in and I created the logo on an app on my phone. I literally pulled it up and I said, this this font. Okay, that, 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 and within, I had a website, and I mean, I had it all, like, in probably 48 hours. I was just like, yeah, boom, let's do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Type is an understatement yeah, for you, Susan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to, to where I, but he keeps me grounded. That's when you asked the question about us and, and how he, he keeps me from just off in the crazy la-la land. So, we really support each other in that regard, so. But, yeah, that's how Yadalu came along. and That's so exciting. So, what are the plans for, because I know this year is September 19th, mm-hmm. so it's on a Saturday, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a whole I mean I'm, is there more things going on this year than yes. there were last year already because yes. I'm sure it caught a lot of heat everybody was like whoa best new festival ever before you got the award oh, and now okay. you've got the award and you've got the ability to attract a lot more people we yeah. want that's a lot of the reason too we're doing this on the show is you've added value to our community and we want to highlight that and show it and get our listeners to come to the festival yes. if they weren't there last year yeah. mm-hmm. and understand exactly what they're going to get as far as their experience goes mm-hmm. and so tell me some about the things you're going to be doing this year at the festival. Sure. I talk uh, a lot. I'll yeah, I mean, <laughs> for, for one, we're going to be doubling the park. So we used half the park um, at, at North Shore River Walk, and uh, we're exploring that other side of the park, and it's it's all a beautiful area, and we're going to have two stages. So, uh, we, I mean, we're working with a lot of people in the community just to bring a, a bigger aesthetic 
to everything. And um, the other stage is going to be a local stage. So we're going to have a lot more uh, local artists. We had so many people reaching out and every day uh, mm-hmm. reaching so out. Awesome. We basically doubled. So I think we had seven spots. We crammed in yeah. as many artists as we could that first year. We had seven bands. And that was a lot for a two to nine slot. So this year we're doing two to eleven, right. and we're going to have fourteen opportunities. Ooh. So that's, that'd be a good time. Yeah. So and and we're going to have um, we're one of the things I learned at the AFEA conference is having activation zones and how to really make them cool and authentic and 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 interactive. And so um, we had a live art. We had live art last year. Yeah. We had a chainsaw artist doing chainsaw art. So we're going to keep that some of those elements, but then build on that. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe some bigger aesthetics. We tried to have a hot air balloon last year, but the wind advisories, we couldn't get oh, it gosh, up. So yeah. lesson learned crazy. on that deal. No, even uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, yeah. they had that same problem mm-hmm. this year. They had so, to fly them to the ground. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, and, and we're so looking at maybe a Ferris wheel or something big. Um, but we had like, I'm sorry. I was just going to say a couple of those uh, things that were great for us were the kids zone yeah. and the dog yeah. park dog they, park they were just a huge hit yes. and the dog park's a big deal the layman library really came through for us and they did an amazing job with the uh, kids zone and did some really interactive uh event or little activities uh, and, for the and kids character, characters yeah. sensory exhibits the painting with the twist i was a co-sponsor on that and they had um live paint and the kids could do all of that and then we had rodeo clowns with the stagecoach we had mm. a velcro velcro axe throw mechanical um, bull mechanical bull hit. and here's something i really want to focus on is that kids 12 and under are free um yeah. and our our earliest bird ticket rate is 20 dollars for an adult so we're really trying to stay affordable um those tickets do go up as you get closer to the date um but when you get in there with your kids it's free yeah. there might be a few things that you pay for but when you pay for it it's like you get a 15 dollar canvas experience and you take that so it's a piece of art they take home yeah, but it's not right. we're not nickel and diamond people when they come in the door to have fun mm-hmm. and one of the i think this is a good problem to have but parents are like i couldn't get my kids away from the kid zone to go watch the music so that, that is I'm a like, good problem to have. that's a good problem to have but um so we're going to expand the footprint two stages um and just build on the brand mm-hmm. um, one of the things that i really want to do like i said is talk is uplift the history of the community engage p- um, other cities around the state to come and be a part of it and i think there's a creative way to do that um and i'm working with some um consultants from other festivals to help me do that mm-hmm. and then um no, increase the number of arts and crafts. We had see, almost 60 arts and crafts vendors, and that does include the dog-related vendors as well. So I yep. want to grow, just grow it all, and make it a, overall. So we'd like to. We want to build maybe a big, huge, human, humongous boot that has the brand on it. <laughs> that would be and really something you can walk in and like something. If you're in humongous boot production, yes, yes. we need that. So I, like I called UALR's art department today, and I said, Hey, you know, somebody call me. This is what I'm looking for. I didn't tell them the boot idea yet, but yeah. like an art department could maybe help us pull that off and yeah. have a, so but anything that we can engage local groups and then military um we would like to have you know there's such a military presence here in this area i mean there's so, two air force bases not yes, even a few minutes from yes, yes. where the yes. park is so, so i really want to find creative ways to help them come out be a part of it uplift them and uh so all of that combined is just growing what we i don't one of the things stan said is don't try to get too big too fast and so i really listened to that word of advice and i think that's what has been the reason for our success is that we do listen to people People have done this. We don't try to go out and have crazy ideas without checking. People have done that because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Right. And so I think what we've basically gone over is where we're growing it, but we're going to keep it like it was last year. And if we just do exactly what we did last year and have more people show up, we'll be you know, happy too. Cool. Right? But yeah. So we're going to create more, but, yeah. but have fun. and continue. Hopefully we'll have double the people. Yeah, we had yeah. a little over uh, 2,000 people there our first year, which I thought I was proud about that. Yeah, you yeah. should be yeah. because it's a thing, thing, something that you, mm-hmm. I really feel, again, like it was a grassroots thing. It was mm-hmm. definitely like, um, I, I mean, I just, I know because I built a business in the city. So mm-hmm. I totally understand when you're trying to get people to understand your view and you're trying to get people to buy into your dream, mm-hmm. yeah. it takes a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. And it's like what you talked about with entrepreneurship, which I've never even really associated mm-hmm. that with the arts, which is crazy, because mm-hmm. you're probably thinking my entire life has been entrepreneur. Well, I say and artistpreneur. Then, you know, there's always that, creative ways to put preneur on something. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the same, really. And that's the thing is I hadn't thought about that. But really what you've done is you've built a business out of something that is your passion, mm-hmm. which is what entrepreneurship is all about. Mm-hmm. And then you've struggled through some of those hills that you have to climb yeah. to get to the, hey, we need awareness. Mm-hmm. We need people to be excited about this. And then we need them to show up on that day mm-hmm. and be supportive. And I think what's exciting is to get that big of a piece of the community behind you. Yeah. 
quickly, right. it's going to be amazing to see what you do this year. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. We're excited. And yeah. I, I cannot say this happened because of the two of us. I mean, there were so many people who helped us and, and they know who they are, but I mean, yeah. I would forget everybody to name them, but I mean, production volunteers, um, our nonprofit is city connections this year. Last year it was habitat for humanity. Um, the, the vendors, um, friends who came in and had been part of other festivals who said, Hey, don't forget to think about this. And so, I mean, I can't say thank you enough to the community and the people who helped us do this because in the sponsors. I was about to say from a sponsorship mm -hmm. standpoint, I call the sunscreen this year mm -hmm. because I just want to be able to, when you get the sunscreen, when you come in, yeah, yeah. I'll provide the sunscreen. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Can, I'll I mean, mark that's it a great out. way to brand yourself as a yes. sponsor at a festival because yes. thousands of people are going to pick up yep. your item. They need it, whether mm -hmm. it's a water bottle or whatever. Yeah. I would challenge our listeners too. If you're wanting to sponsor something, this yes. is an excellent opportunity for and you to get yourself out there. I think to the sponsors who yeah. are maybe considering this is a fun event and we want and we're creative people if you can't tell so yeah. <laughs> let's creatively integrate that brand into our experience if you're a dog related or you've got something to do with dogs that's part of your brand let's get creative how do we integrate that into the dog park or kids um country music you know the if your demographic is close to ours let's get creative with your brand and how we market it we're very forward thinking and very um we're spending money a lot of money on social media where i think is very important so that kind of um uh visibility from an advertising standpoint we have our thumb on the pulse of that and i think that's going to be added value for we do radio and tv as well and some print but the the social media a lot of companies um really like when you say i'm going to guarantee a certain amount of impressions and reach and so we have that in our sponsorship packages as well as just yeah. getting creative i think that's the main yeah, thing not, so instead of just putting your name up on a website media. or banner let's do something cool that's going to be an experience for our demographic to something outside of the box that that wouldn't they normally wouldn't do so yeah just with our last uh presenting sponsor last year which was heritage um agriculture of arkansas yeah, yeah and they what we did with them i mean they brought out a 30 foot tractor and we had Huge tractors tractors. everywhere and, i mean it was crazy it looked like a tank you know yeah, it was and really, um, really cool. that was that was one of the coolest things i think people Kids loved it, seeing mm -hmm. the huge tractors and everywhere. So uh, just adding those different creative elements to just really get their brand out there. Mm -hmm. And at, that that was a, a big takeaway for them. You should get a bunch of tractors out there and have like a tractor competition, you know? Like well, I've seen I, I a thought, guy yeah, do like a, a rainbow with a tractor. Have you ever seen that where they take both ends of the tractor and they put them on the ground and lift themselves up oh, yeah. in the middle? You can have like a, a tractor stunt competition. Yeah. Well, I did I did get off. I uh, just talked to the monster truck guy. Monster trucks. Yeah, that would be super. Bring a so I'm like, truck. I'm out there. Pressure's thing. on, monster truck guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that and then just. Bring a tank out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys at the military. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think this is, we're going to use this to get all of our sponsors. Yes, right? yeah. I like, yes. See, and I feel like that's the thing is I'm already like, okay, well, let's do our thing. I want to be well, part I, of that. And I think that's what you love is the whole community. Yes, does and something I thought about like with real estate companies or, I mean, I know that hits home with you, but just like how do you find an industry that's, that's in this a little bit competitive? And maybe you have like a mini little um, parade float that goes through the festival that's like judged and it's like putting, you know, I don't know. Best just line dance. Yeah, or something. <laughs> I mean, just, or, or a, a tractor, uh, a uh, a parade that's pulled by tractors. Yeah. And then you have, you know, or, I don't know. I don't know if we're ready for a parade yet, but we are trying to get fireworks ha to happen this year. We'll see if yeah. that sponsor comes along. Well, I think this is going to be incredible. I can't wait to see this year and what it's evolved into. But what I think is really amazing about it is it's exactly what you wanted it to be. It's an organic thing that came out of a relationship where you guys both get to love each other and love your community mm -hmm. and love what you do. And we want to be part of supporting that um, goal to be at home and to build your roots and be able to stay here to make your money. And that's mm -hmm. what Arkansas, I feel like from the entrepreneurial standpoint, there are so many people in our community that are working together to try and get their dreams to come mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. but that have the ability to rely on one another to make that yes, happen. And, and that, so, that's, that's absolutely the sentiment. And the, I think the, the fundamental or the fundamental underlying goal of this whole thing is just to create something cool that everybody benefits from and in our own home and that's what's been so i mean like being a part of the chamber and how i met you to be an i group right mm -hmm. i mean building those relationships that's really the most fulfilling part is watching other people succeed together and supporting each other and all the goals that we have and so um yeah, yeah i'll so. never forget that when you first came in that me i was like what is oh and this? i was equally was so impressed with you you were leading there i was like i want to be her when i grow up <laughs> yeah, the thing is like i do real estate like there's a lot of people that do real estate but there's not a lot of people who 
create something. Out of, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just yeah. saying, like, there's a lot of things that people can do with their lives, but what you've done is you've managed to integrate the thing that you're most passionate about and build something that benefits the entire community. So yeah. definitely applaud you for that. No, thank you. And I think it's funny, too, because you guys get to do this together. And yes. so my biggest question is, in the back of my mind, it keeps like, shut up, Jamie, don't ask them this. No, do it. To. Ask me. So you're, like, so busy, and you're doing this festival, and you're building it. Day comes. You have a million things going on, and people you have to check in with. How do you concentrate on performing? Do you want to know what it, I did? It just <laughs> yes, happened. I do. It's like autopilot. I don't even know. Well, here's what happened. She's I like, literally, for you. I was. Well, no, no. <laughs> so I've been perform. We've been music comes second nature to us. So, and we've had we perform over 200 dates a year. So, like, you, I can just go like this and be like, oh, and here I am, you know, in the stage or whatever. So I can I can switch that pretty easily now for myself. But we were running. We were putting out fires. Walkie talkies in my ear. I was a oh, sweaty yeah. mess. I got a sunburn that day. My oh, hair yeah. was in a ponytail. I, I did not care what I looked like, right? I'm running around crazy. And they're like, five minutes, Susan, you got to be on stage. And I'm like, okay. So I take my walkie-talkie off. I put it in my back pocket. <laughs> I take my hair down and I fluff it. And people watch me do this. I fluff my hair and I'm like, all right, here we go. And I go on stage and we do it. And we're like singing sweating. Devil Went Down to Georgia and like the whole thing. And, it, and we had fun. But I just had to sw- switch the switch. And then I went yeah. back to putting my, more fires out. <laughs> yep. My face so hurts just... from smiling about this because I just think that's so, and it's amazing because you would think that that would be stressful, but you, like you said, not only are you trained for it musically, but the entrepreneurship that over all these years you've been building what you wanted to build and now it's autopilot. Mm-hmm. I can do it. I mean, so, same for you, right, yeah. I guess. And it's and it's really, um, yeah, it's just a zone that you go into. It's like when you get on stage, you're like, Oh my gosh, I got to do this right now. But then when you start doing it, you, you kind of forget about everything else. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you... uh, we we had a that was our break. That was our little yeah. short <laughs> short <laughs> little break. Yeah. And then just right back to it. Yeah. Um, and t- I can't say uh, enough about the production team and the stage yeah. manager and the sound and all of our crew. Thank and goodness all that, someone yeah. told you went off yeah. Yeah. Such yeah. A yeah. We had two more. You might be and in trouble. And just everything yeah. they did to provide such a quality experience. I mean, it was that that was the key to being able to pull that that experience off to have all of all of the from the people who brought the porta potties to the people who were on stage introducing the bands and and everybody behind the scenes volunteers all of it I mean that was crazy and so I've learned so much and to say thank you is not enough like I have to say thank you over and over again to those people yeah. so yeah well that and they're gonna come out and listen to your music which is their payment in full you no, know they well. get the opportunity to be fans and mm-hmm. hear you guys at home and so I would encourage all of our listeners to get behind you and your music page and also come to the festival but to really help support this community and what you are doing for the community so mm-hmm. that we can all enjoy the arts because like another thing you said that's what the arts district is really cool but there's even art night on Riverwalk there's so many things that relate to the arts mm-hmm. in Arkansas and I feel like you're giving giving them an opportunity to be even further exposed. Mm-hmm. And that's really important because anymore too, like with my son, he's really into sports and he does these things for school, but he doesn't, you know, the artistic outlet, he hasn't found it yet. And mm-hmm. I think when you give kids an opportunity to see that and listen to it, and maybe I want to play the fiddle, maybe I want to play the piano, maybe mm-hmm. I want to paint, they're at this opportunity where they're going to get to go towards what they're yeah. attracted to yeah. and build their interests from there. So mm-hmm. I think even from just, of course, I'm pregnant right now, so I'm thinking of yeah. children, but that's well, going to be... Well, we recently went out to Jacksonville Elementary, and we uh, played for them just to inspire, because we want that we want those kids to be inspired in the arts, and I think yeah. that's so, so critical. I mean, it's it teaches them so much. So. And it's a huge, like, and totally different subject, but it's a whole, like, stress relief kind of thing. It's a whole mental, mm-hmm. like, you get this outlet artistically to handle your feelings and to express your emotions right. and be who you are in this outlet yeah. that you don't get in your everyday, mm-hmm. you know, I don't get to express myself all the time when I'm selling a house. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, so it can be a hobby or a career and yeah. it's, it, there's, and there's science behind, I mean, there, it's improves math and science scores to have music in your life. And so, I mean, it's, it's really near and dear to my heart, but you know, another thing I, I want to make sure that... on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, when I was playing music, I didn't learn more, you know, I probably know more about music than math, Yeah. but that's because one's way more fun than the other. Yeah. But what were you going to say? Well, I just want to, you know, one of the things I, I want people to know is that Yadalu is the hat we wear, but it's not just about Yadalu, it's about supporting other 
other events in the community and working to uplift each other and like working with the Art Walk in North Little Rock in the Argenta District. And if we can ever help anyone with music related um, events and programming, we just, we want to help out. I wish there was eight of me and I'd come to everybody's event all the time and we would be there. Um, and sometimes it's a challenge to always be in everywhere at the same time. But like Soma has a great thing going on with their music group, uh, the South on Main area. And then you've got all of River Market and we've got so many businesses coming in and events and I learn, feel like I learn about a new event all the time and I'm like oh I gotta go to that I gotta go to this but then you know I can't be at everything all the time so yep. we just want to continue to grow that support across all all avenues here in central Arkansas so well I'm super proud of you and for you watching you guys build this over time has been incredibly impressive to watch and Thank to combine you. the entrepreneurial skills with the musical talent and and then give us something that we can have every year to look forward to it's like our mini Coachella you know people do talk right. about this big massive festival I like the idea of it being local I yeah. like the idea of it being built off of a community mm-hmm. I yes people could come in from out of town but this is our turf yeah, you know? so yeah. I really like that you're doing it here and for the community that you love yeah. so before we get going I want to make sure that we get your website out and the information where if somebody's interested in being a sponsor finding more about Yodaloo the kind of one stop shop where could somebody go to find out more information yeah, or to get website. involved the website yodaloo.com that's y-a-d-a-l-o-o.com you said um, that a few times yes <laughs> yodaloo.com and if you just even if you misspell it on Google I'm sure we'll come up so yeah. uh, yodaloo.com and you can sign up for our mailing list and um, if you want to join us as a volunteer if you're a arts and crafts vendor an artist, um, a band, if you're a food vendor, all of that can be found on our website. You can sign up. There's all of the forms there. You can reach out to me personally. You'll find all of my contact information at yadaloo.com and all the socials. We're Yadaloo Fest everywhere. So um, we're, we're present everywhere and we love to hear your feedback and get involved with you. So just find us there. Yeah, I even got to hear more about TikTok, which I don't know anything about, <laughs> but you taught me about it. Yes, so TikTok, we ha- we're we about to try to make a little bit of a splash with Yodaloo on TikTok, but we just joined as Cliff and Susan right now on TikTok, so we're there. We had we were talking about our chocolate cutting video that had 1.3 million views, which blew our mind. That was our, <laughs> our Christmas pastime was TikTok, learning about it, so that's another podcast for another day. An entrepreneur's <laughs> life. <laughs> Dad, remember that Christmas that we did this for social media? Yeah. That's funny. But we were talking about how there's they're actually starting to did can't say the word distribute music for Mm -hmm. independent artists onto TikTok so you can actually monetize now so that's kind of cool which I think that's really important and just Mm -hmm. like I said I mean it kind of is going to age me a little bit but I remember when way back in the day when MySpace was the thing right Mm -hmm. and I remember seeing one of a musical artist who was playing guitar by a fire Mm -hmm. and I thought oh she's cool you know next thing I know she's Taylor Swift and she's uh, everybody knows who she is and I'm like you put your music out on the internet yep. with a guitar, and now you guys are able similarly to mm-hmm. build your brand and build who you are and get ex, you know expose your brand mm-hmm. and your music. And I'm just excited for well, everyone and, here. And social yeah. media helped us paint the picture of what Yodaloo was. I was going out and going, okay, I've got this idea in my brain. How do I paint that picture? How do I go and license the right Adobe stock image to say I'm going to have kids with face paint there what is that going to look like (laughs) until you have the vid now I've got the video and the photos but until then I had but social media was how we painted the picture and the idea of it all and then just said okay this is what's going to happen and like you said then it happened then people like oh okay yeah Um, so now we know where to go on September 19th to have a good time with our family kids and dogs yes (laughs) tickets most likely will go on sale at the first of June we're um, working through contracts right now and everything to get the announcement of the lineup and then our earliest bird ticket will be twenty dollars so we yep. feel like we're super affordable and a uh, really fun experience for a september fall festival i'm so excited for you guys i can't wait to see you out there thank and you. i'm super thankful thank you for coming yeah, on the show thank and you thank anything you. we course. can ever do no thank you guys well serenade me that's for sure uh, <laughs> we'll do that with a piano and guitar in for sure. <laughs> well thank you guys for coming on the show we appreciate you and we will see you at the festival thank you. all right little rock we're out Thanks for listening to the Little Rock Block Talk podcast. If you're interested in hearing more, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow our page. If you're also interested in sponsoring an episode, reach out to us on Facebook.